channel. Uh, I'm working on this 2012 Dodge Journey. What I want you to do is look at some real quick. I'm under the underbody. Okay, this is uh, the transaxle, okay, meaning the axle part is built into the transmission. As you can see, the two axles coming out of the side. That makes it a front wheel drive unit. Now, back into the rear. You can see a drive shaft going to the rear, which happens to be attached to a viscous coupling, which is right here. All, you all should also notice this brand new, which is attached to a differential, which is also attached to two more axles that transfer torque to the rear wheels. Okay, now from these uh, parts alone, you could assume this is an all wheel drive unit. This is brand new viscous coupling. Let me say that again. Now, what I want you to look at here, uh, notice some right here. This is the part that get people in trouble, okay? Let's take a look at these tire sizes. Okay, right here, 255-55-R19. Keep in mind, I'm at the rear of the vehicle. Now, let's move up to the front. And what do we have up front? Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is a good picture of the tire size? It is uh, Right here. Okay, 255-50 R19. Okay, which means the front tires are totally different from the rear. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a no-no. You cannot do that in an all-wheel drive unit. Okay, so this brand new viscous coupling that I just replaced about a month ago is ruined. It's normally used to link the rear wheels to the front wheels so that when one set of wheels start to slip, torque will be transferred to the other set. All right. So all four tires have to match. You will ruin your suspension and your drivetrain driving around in an all-wheel drive vehicle with mismatched tires okay if you're driving an all-wheel drive unit make sure your tires match all right that's all i have man thanks for watching comment subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next hey, video take, sure all right guys i'm at a car lot i'm here to check out a chrysler 300 for a guy he is ticking he want me to shut it up that's all my job is to do is to shut it up however while i'm here waiting on him i come over here and see a cherokee with the hood up actually i let the hood up and guys what do i notice y'all see that don't be doing that. How many times I got to tell y'all, this is not cool. Guys, poor connection at the battery on a car this sophisticated could brick your car, could send you, send your whole electrical system in haywire and brick it. You can't, you won't be able to start it, won't be able to shift gears, won't be able to do nothing. So I advise you to don't. Simple, Scotty Kilmore, don't. Don't do that, don't stick a damn screw. Oh my goodness, just get a another terminal. This is replaceable. Or just get another battery with the proper size uh, head on it. Oh my goodness, stop this. Alright, I'm done picking on them. Alright, it's supposed to be for sale, but I hope they gotta fix it first. Guys, that's all I have, man. Just wanted to highlight that. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, guys, real quick, they told me my parts are down here on the vehicle. Oh, yes, some nice, good brainless maintenance work. Keep in mind, the goal behind maintenance work, guys, we're trying to prolong the life of the vehicle. So from time to time, we need to change some fluid. I got some cooling flush here, real differential. Oil filter. And the thing about this oil filter, as far as the oil change go, let me show y'all this. Y'all see this cap? This vehicle takes zero W20. Okay, this is a Gen 3 Pentastar engine. All right, no, it doesn't use 5W20. Um, this takes zero W20 fully synthetic. All right, so yeah, I'm trying to prolong the life of the car. They figured they'd get tune up is not due yet. Tune up due at 100,000 miles. I don't think this vehicle have 100,000 miles yet. And it's not four wheel drive, so there is no transfer case to service. All right, yes, and we already rotate and balance the tires in an alignment. So now comes the cooling flush, real diff, oil change, help prolong the life of the car. Guys, I advise you to stay on top of your maintenance. All right, that's all I have. Alrighty, guys, finally, I got a chance to answer this question. Guys, here's a scenario you're doing bank two, okay? You got a ticker job. You found one rock arm over here. You decided to only do this rock arm. Well, you start disassembling in some way, somehow, I don't know, uh, you forgot to mark it, all right? Or somebody turned the engine. Now, you don't know what top dead center at. Guys, you have two choices, two options. You can either rotate the crankshaft, pull number one spark plug, and what? Rotate the crankshaft until number one piston is all the way up, or you can simply remove the valve cover on bank one 
and rotate the engine and verify by the marks. Remember on bank one, we don't use the arrows on the phaser, we use the lines. So verify that the lines are lined up side by side. That way you know cylinder one is all the way up, okay? Just so happened, I don't know, like I say, you probably forgot to mark it, but at any rate, I finally got a chance to answer that question. Either rotate the engine with bringing up one uh, cylinder one, or remove the valve cover and look this way. That way you can be assured you had top dead center. All right, gotta go. Real quick, guys, y'all see this mileage, right? 32,826. Now, this is a 2010 Chrysler PT Cruiser. Clean little joker, too. All right. Now, I want to know y'all thoughts on this. How y'all feel about this? Keep in mind, I just said it's a 2010 with 32,000 miles. I have to sell. Remember, guys, when you work for an establishment, they have rules in place. One of the rules I have to go by is I have to try and upsell even a timing belt on this car. I know some of y'all would say a timing belt. It just has 32,000 miles. But we're talking about age here. That timing belt today, as it stands in its original state, is practically 13 years old. Right? 2010, 10 more. Yeah, 13 years old. Okay, so do you replace it because of that reason alone? Uh, according to some establishments, yes. So I have to write up. A high dollar thermostat or high dollar timing belt job on this okay along with the other repairs but i just thought i'd bring it up and see y'all hear y'all thoughts on that man let me know how y'all feel Oops. real quick guys this is a challenge a dodge challenge i want to show somebody was asking me about uh draining the oil on the cooler the oil cooler y'all know all the 62 supercharged hellcat trim engines or setup it's a challenge uh will be will include a oil cooler all right Yes, oil cooler is right above the oil filter, of course. It's going to have two lines running out in front of the bumper. See, the bumper is off of this one, so it's very visible on this one. All right, yes, take you a half inch, look like. Drain the oil out, oil, oil out. When you're doing an oil change, yes, reach up under the cow and drain the oil out of here as well. They do this at the dealer as well, so you want all the old oil out because that oil is basically circulating, all right? Let's hit it to an oil cooler. Look similar to a trans cooler, all right, a uh, radiator, what have you, but yeah, let's get the oil out of there as well. This is a 6.2 supercharged uh, Hellcat trim engine. Very powerful, all right? Uh, thanks for watching. Alrighty, guys, here we go real quick. Another shorts. Here's this engine, guys. We're getting ready to put it in. We got it all prepped up, got the oil pan on it. Now I left the front timing cover off and, uh, of course, the intake off. Here's the old engine, guys. We got all the stuff off we need on the new engine. We're about to drop it in, man. Let's get it. Uh.